Well, hi everyone. This is Sagar Shah, and welcome to the thirteenth day of Improve Your Chess with Sagar. And welcome to everyone who is in the live stream. I see a few known names, a few new names, but uh, yeah, everyone is asking me <laughs> why am I late? Well. Uh, there's no particular reason for that i'm late by 1 minute i hope that's fine uh, also today is going to be a real interesting class as you can see the topic of today i see a few Oops. known names yeah today is going to be a very interesting class as you can see uh, the topic written there and i think it's going to be very very useful for all of you so just a shout out to everyone here who is there hema malini anand okay uh, he, she says even if i am late i am the latest <laughs> okay shivam choudhary rahul gupta atharva polekar mukilan bala chanchal ja dandapani kuppu swami well uh, welcome to all of you here i hope that you had a good day yesterday uh and now you are ready for the training well today we're going to discuss something interesting material as well as how to win winning games we'll try to cover both material imbalance as well okay so let's begin like every day with tactics and uh, this is something i don't want to give up on because often you are waking up and coming to the show half asleep maybe one eye closed and i thought let's begin with some tactics and then you know we can move on to something more difficult so let's go oh i have to log in okay so let's go from here uh let's solve some tactics by the way we have our first contributor this is black to play we have first contributor for today dandapani kuppu swami thank you so much dandapani for your contribution for all the people out there remember that we are doing this live show we are also accepting donations and contributions that will go to pm cares fund i will tell you more about it in a bit uh, but first black to move very easy one to begin with ilam parthi is here pradeep das says two eyes are closed well pradeep time to open them haider yasmin manthan kale uday paideti shivam choudhary ishir narayanan chanchal ja tarun mohini bhave all of you have got it right tinku saha manthan kale amaya kanetkar aditya ramnathan neev patel kimaya virle shriyana malya rook d1 is a mate well done guys okay let's go to the next one <laughs> jaydeep chakrabarti says good morning sagar i am ready with my torch carried from last night 9 pm powered by queen bishop battery okay wonderful uh this is white to move what should white do well a big shout out to saurav banerji who says thank you sagar sir for the most inspiring lessons he's contributed 100 rupees thank you saurav Uh, and i'm going to tell you all about how our contributions are going on but right now we we try to figure out how to win this and remember guys it's not mate in one again so don't give me one move answers try to find out what's happening here yes akshit bhatia you you have given more than one moves Ujjal Datta thank you so much for 100 rupees contribution uh, today has been a very quick start yesterday for nearly 15 minutes we had hardly any contributors but today we have three 
Dandapani Kuppu Swami, Saurav Banerjee, and now uh, Ujjal Datta. Thank you so much. Okay, so the question is, if you play Queen D5, King H7, what is the next move? Because if King H8, you give Rook D8 check and win the Queen. But if King H7, still you play Rook D8. Uh, but try to calculate, try to calculate if it's working or not. Queen d5, king h7, rook d8. Does black have something here? Can he try for something to confuse the issue? Or he doesn't have anything? This is what we are going to discuss today. White may be winning here, but if you are not alert, he may. Yes, exactly. Who is this? Arun Dixit gives a very nice answer. He says, Queen d5, king h7, rook d8, and then rook into b3, check. Because now if queen into b3, your rook on d8 is hanging. So, you need to consider opponent's resources. If you don't consider your opponent's resources, you are going to have a tough time in chess. Chess is not a one-player game. Shriyana, Malya, queen d5, king h7, rook d8, rook into b3. What do you do there? Do you then play king a2? But then I go rook b2 check. If king a3, I can even get checkmated with queen b4. A big shout out to Virendra for contributing 20 rupees. Virendra, thanks a lot for consistently supporting the stream. Rishila Banerjee has contributed 100 rupees and said, You are my inspiration. Thank you. Well, Rishila, it's wonderful to know. Um, Saurav is, is, is her father and Rishila is daughter. So both of them, the family is contributing heavily. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, so queen d5, king h7 is the, what do you do next? King h7, queen f7, queen g8, queen f6. This is Neev Patel's answer. But Neev, do you see here? The b3 pawn can start hanging if you take on f6. So be careful, be careful. Guys, don't blunder away things. You know. Queen c4, king f8, queen f7. Yeah, of course, if not king f8. Okay, let's see what Sumit says. Queen d5, king h7, rook d8, rook b3, king a2, rook b2. Rook b2, what? King b3. Queen b3. No, I don't get it. Maybe you didn't write it correctly. Yeah, new, there is a... You're going to lose b3 pawn if you play that way. Okay, so I don't think anyone has been able to actually solve this yet. It's not, not trivial, I guess. So my suggestion is, and maybe I'm I'm wrong, uh, but I feel okay that queen d5, king h7, and now g5. I don't know if anyone wrote this move. Maybe I missed it. But the point is, if you play fg, okay, I I am planning to play. Um, f6 and if you play hg then i play queen f7 threatening a mate and if queen g8 queen h5 mate what do you think let's see if we have anyone giving answers maybe ilam Parthi here can help us i don't know if he's answered it uh, creative master shikhar has contributed 200 and he said, please tell me how to get Chessbase 15 and Mega Database and how much it costs. Well, Creative Master Shikhar, I will do that in a bit. Also, Prathamesh Divekar has contributed 100 rupees. Thank you so much, Prathamesh, for your contribution. Very nice of you. 
yes jan daryl batula has i think given the same line as me so let's play the moves now check king h7 and rook d not rook d8 but g5 yes that's the right move and i think now fg because we know hg loses to queen f7 queen g8 i'll i'll show those moves later queen h5 mate but now how do we continue i think we can go queen f7 here but then queen g8 if queen g6 king h8 so how about beginning with f6 but f6 you must keep in mind there is a move like c6 although i don't think it works c6 means uh, queen e4 check king h8 fg7 yeah that should be good and that wins if king g8 i can still go i guess there should be something winning there maybe something like f7 and then take on b7 and f8 queen so yeah f6 and we solved it well done guys i think this is these such positions are where you need to be on the top of your game yeah you can't be lazy you can't be saying oh it's only 9 30 9 10 i can't think yet my brain starts working only after a morning cup of tea or coffee by the way i must tell you that when i was young uh, i I read that Bobby Fisher uh, would not consume tea or coffee and the reason for that was that he didn't want external stimulants to sort of make his brain start working because you know he had to play chess he was the best chess player in the world so anytime he could have to play so he didn't want to depend upon tea and coffee and I read about it and I it kind of I felt that it's right and so I stopped drinking tea and coffee sort of it's not like i completely stopped but i i never take it in the morning on a daily basis if i'm somewhere out and someone offers me coffee yeah sure i'll take it but i'm not a daily drinker of it because i realize that well it's it's not required you know if someone wakes me up i don't need a tea or coffee to get in the right frame of mind that's the reason why okay so g5 i think was brilliant by the way all those who said queen f7 queen g8 and i think neo was saying queen f6 well you lose this way uh, and rook d8 those who felt trapping the queen should have seen this move yeah this is and here if you take i take your rook and if you move your king away somewhere then my rook pursues and i think this is going to be not so uh, good okay so shashank says either you are waking up or you have dinner plate in your hand focused on food then on the board yes you are in the us and it's dinner time there i have to remember that this is a world show like many people from different countries are here uh, then it's not just waking up okay so let's do the last one for the day this is black to move okay this doesn't seem too tough but i want precise move don't give me one move don't give me one move give me a precise variation which ends the game yeah kushal the g5 move was 2500 difficulty that's true Tanuja Sahasra Buddha, tactics is your stimulant. Well, yeah, sort of. Get into the groove with tactics. Well, Prathamesh, queen h6 means g h6. There's no pin, so that doesn't work. Yeah, Ilamparthi has got it right. Well done, Ilamparthi. <laughs> Yusuf Faryad says I don't hear the bird. Well, maybe I got rid of it completely. Uh, yeah, very good. Aditya Ramnathan, right line. Pradeep Das, well done. Neev Patel also got it right. Vimal Dave says any difference between chess base 15 and Prit 17? We'll come to it. 
okay well done guys many of you have got the right move which is queen to c3 and it's heartening to see that you have not written just one move but actually also rook b1 check here king b1 and queen a1 mate well done okay so i think we have warmed up enough now couple of things before we move ahead uh our fundraising for this entire session is going well we have collected 51519 rupees i would like to thank niklesh jain who does shows in the evening at 5 o'clock all those who uh, don't know about it can attend it and understand hindi uh, he does it at 5 pm on chess base india hindi so together we have raised 51000 rupees and you can see the details of all the contributors here uh, day twice every day and i would like to give a shout out to all the pay you money uh, link uh donors because i can't do it during the show i have to check it later so ravi raj vivan saraogi by the way vivan is a very talented youngster from nagpur i don't know if he's on the show here but vivan if you are there uh welcome he is 8 years old but tremendous talent we have a video of him on the youtube channel krishna gosavi who contributed 1000 rupees shri devi rongali and shahid hussain thank you all uh, i would just like to show you guys uh, how much we have raised now uh, we have raised 51519 rupees and yesterday we collected 6511 uh, that's that's a good good amount that we are raising and i am sure that today and in the next 7 days or 8 days we will be raising even more funds that we can contribute to pm cares it it feels nice that all of you are contributing towards this good cause uh, now a bit more which i must tell you is about the online tournament that we are having uh, this will be held on 9th of april uh, and this will be held on play chess uh this is a fundraising event there are no prizes but all of you can contribute there and be a part of it i don't know why the internet is so slow today uh okay let me just see a few uh comments juan rajagopal says hello from wales wow you're you're from wales and he says he wakes up at 4 am every day wonderful amazing okay uh, i guess we can wait till this loads and there were certain questions on how to get chess base 15 uh well maybe when the internet is better i don't know but i can stream well so i i don't know why the internet is causing a problem okay let's get back to the training <clears throat> and today's session is kind of a uh, a very important one because we are going to talk about how to win one games and for me this session was quite uh, difficult to prepare or you can say also easy in some ways the games which i had to choose was i had to only remember myself and remember all those moments when i cried yeah like cried like a baby and uh, those are the games which were the most painful because i was completely winning and i'm sure that uh, all of you have had such games in your life where you have cried if there is anyone who's not cried in their life uh, please write down in the comment section for chess uh, and uh, for a chess for a game of chess if you haven't cried before then please let me know in the comment section <clears throat> mayur gondalekar says one suggestion like we have tournament on 9th which is a fundraiser with minimum of 100 rupees i could do an event being 1 and 1/2 could you do an event 
of one and a half to two hours lesson by say with it well we are in talks with not just with it who would be i think uh, possibly joining in but also with adiban and many other players uh, and we will be um, trying to do something interesting so stay tuned for that by the way shriyana malya who is one of india's youngest talents and i have mentioned this on the stream in the past turns 10 years old today shriyana happy birthday to you and she says i'm very happy to celebrate with all of you she's contributed 500 rupees also shriyana wish you a very happy birthday uh let me just see if i can shriyana malya chess base india yeah so this is yeah this is shriyana here so all those who would like to know her we have an interview with her she was under 8 commonwealth gold medalist of india now she is 10 years old so this was 2 years ago shriyana happy birthday happy birthday <clears throat> wonderful okay harish kumar has contributed 40 rupees harish welcome to the show uh, good morning to you as well thank you so much for your contribution okay by the way this is where the tournament is taking place uh, on the let's fight corona together fundraiser online event and this is where vidit will be playing and doing live streaming he will be analyzing his games while playing so like talking about it and we have had many donors sashikiran nilotpal das magesh chandran ankit rajpara stani ga and all of them so together i think we have already collected over 50000 rupees for just the event so that's a big a collection and i will recommend all of you to contribute 100 rupees is the minimum contribution you can go here uh where is this top donors yeah here you can pay 100 rupees from here no don't pay it from the same link in the description pay it from here and you will get to play uh, against these top players by the way a big thanks to manoj joseph who's contributed 150 rupees manoj thanks a lot uh, and by the way i didn't get everyone's answers about crying because there were so many but let me just read it because it's interesting to see if you guys have ever cried because i am uh, i till a certain point i used to cry a lot okay so soumya mahesh says i cried at mangalore tournament ah by the way um uh, i need to just show you guys this part uh, this is shriyana malya if i if i didn't uh, maybe i didn't change the scene so she is turning 10 years old this was done 2 years ago she is the under 8 commonwealth champion you can go to youtube and find her interview uh i was saying about the let's fight corona fundraiser online blitz on 9th of april with it will be there there'll be also uh, shashi kiran has contributed nilotpal das magesh chandran ankit stani and lot of so you just need to go here and make a payment of 100 rupees and you can also play you can also contribute more if you like okay so that was about that and for one question that i had received which was how to get mega database well here uh, chessbase here there is an online shop you can go here and write chessbase 15 and you will get all the different types of chessbase 15 you have we have mega pack we have upgrade from 14 chess base 15 chess base 15 plus mega database combo so you can go here and buy them if you like uh, i think that was one of the questions that was asked by uh, creative master shikhar so i hope you your question is answered and for one more question which was what's the difference between fritz and chess base i think fritz is mainly for playing against an engine although you can do many things like analyzing storing your database but it is for also playing against an engine and if you don't want to play against an engine 
then I think Chessbase 15 is much better for analytical work, for saving your games, for saving your database from a long term perspective. So this is the main difference. Okay. So about the crying part. Yeah. Uh, Jayant Rao says I have not cried for a chess game before. Arun Dixit says I have never cried but I have felt sad after losing a game. Mitesh Borkhetarya says once I was two rook plus blundered both pawn and lost. Okay. Aditya Anand says I cried only one time in my life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Reema Singh says never. Vishal Kumar says I cried too much because of chess in my career. Uh, Quest says everyone. Yusuf Faryad says upset but maybe but never crying. Okay. Soham Shirode says I cried when I lost to 1000 rated player. I missed an easy mate in two. Ah, that must have been hard. Okay. Aditi says I cried in the bathroom and then used to get scolding from my dad. Well, Aditi, very sorry to hear that. We have all been through this phase uh, here and I think this is a place where everyone understands that <clears throat> that it has been tough while playing chess and today we are going to try and discuss about it. Okay, so I would also like to thank Krishna Kumar Bagel who has contributed 40 rupees and said you are really gem of India in promoting chess. Thank you so much Krishna Kumar. Uh, wonderful. It, joke, joke. Uh, how do I pronounce this? Kyoga Nantham has contributed 40 rupees. Thank you so much, Kyoga. Okay, so let's do start with yesterday's homework. First, I had given you a game by... This was the game that we had given for homework. A lot of people did work on it. It was my game against Vikramaditya Kulkarni uh, and it was a very interesting game. A lot of people said to me that it was enjoyable. So let's have a look at it. By the way, uh, Harish Kumar has contributed 20 rupees. Thank you so much for that. And Shrutartha Maiti has also contributed 200 rupees. Thank you so much Shrutarthi, Shrutartha. For, for contributing and he asks how to enter Vishy Anand Arena in play chess. Okay, I'll be talking about this once we finish this game. If you can remind me uh, towards the end of the class, I will show you that. <clears throat> okay, so Vikramaditya, I must tell you a few things about him. I've played him several times uh, and he is an IM very strong player his highest rating was 2470 if i'm not mistaken uh, and um, very good player from mumbai but when you play against him he is like i often say that he's like a machine yeah he has no emotions he's sitting there if he's winning he's like this if he's losing he's like this and for me it's not at all easy yeah to play such an opponent because there are there are no expressions. Even when he's winning, he just makes his move calmly. Even when he's losing, it doesn't matter. And I think he has won the most number of lost positions in chess. You know, big fighter. Uh, and so when he played knight f3, I played c5, c4, g6, e3. By the way, you remember now uh, our opening, which is d5. If you haven't forgotten my class on the opening which went castles castles knight c6 i hope you remember this then we take on a4 bishop c4 knight a5 bishop e6 uh, and then knight d5 rook c8 and so on so vikramaditya here did c5 uh, Sairam Sampath has contributed 200 rupees. Thank you so much, Sairam. Yeah, Prathamesh Divekar says his pet name is Viku. <laughs> yes, everyone calls him Viku 
or Don Viku or something like this. Um, yeah, thanks a lot, Sairam, for your contribution of 200 rupees. Really grateful for the same. Uh, BG7, Knight C3, Castles, A3. And this actually fits in with our yesterday's concept of space. White has tried to gain space in the position. And black has continued with his development. If you look at it, I have played my knight, other knight, developed my bishop, castled. So in a way, I have made a lot of improving moves. While black, white has played e3, d4, then he played c4, c5, now a3. He spent a lot of pawn moves. And I have told you, if it's not important, do not waste so much time on making pawn moves. So he went b4, again a pawn move. And now it was my time to actually take advantage of this thing, like where he is trying to spend a lot of time with pawn moves. So what should I do here? You know, what should I do in this position? Black to move. I must do something active. Yeah, not just say, okay, I play passively. Uh, something more aggressive. Yes, by the way, all those who sent me the homework, I have seen it. Uh, thank you so much for sending it. Wasim Farooq says, you are my teacher, respect from Pakistan. Well, welcome Wasim. It's wonderful to know that chess can bring people together. Uh, very nice that you are, you are looking at it. Yeah, so here... Uh, there are many moves in this position possible. Uh, e5 is definitely a possibility. But then, you know, you're giving up a pawn right now. And, well, I don't need to go into that right now. Possible, like, say, for example, e5 takes knight e4. This could be a very aggressive way of playing, playing this position. Uh, I also think bishop g4 is a possibility here, not at all a bad move. But I went for knight to e4 and I think this is also a nice move, unleashing the bishop on this diagonal. So he played bishop b2 and now came the move bishop to g4. I think this was very strong. My threat is to take here and then to take this pawn. And, and actually it's very difficult to fight against it. In fact, it's it's almost i would say close to losing position for black yeah for white believe it or not it's come too soon but the d4 pawn is just too weak so he played bishop e2 and then i took and he took back with the pawn now because if he took with the bishop then i think i can just take a pawn and i'm a pawn up with a completely better position so he took with the pawn and here uh this was also fine, knight into c3, but I went knight g5. And the point is clear, I want to put my knight on e6 and win this pawn. It's going to be impossible to defend that weakness. So now Vikramaditya was in his normal situation where he has a bad position and he has to fight it out. And he's a big fighter, so he is not uh, going to give up. So he took, he played h4. I went knight e6. And now d4 is attacked. So he played h5 because it couldn't be defended. I took on d4. He played king f1. So I'm a pawn up. Now you are winning. Yes. So in terms of material, I'm a pawn up. So that's our next imbalance. When you are materially ahead, you are in a better position most of the times. So here I'm a pawn up. Mohini Bhave says, I think gf3 creates weakness instead of being pawned down on d4 may be better. Well, Mohini, the thing is, when you are going to be pawned down, you need to create play. For example, if you do this, I'm just a simple pawn down. While what these players do is, they make the position messy. Like for example, opening the h file, although it may be worse than bishop f3, at least it creates some chances for the opponent to go wrong. And that's the reason why they do it. Uh, here I went knight f4, which is a perfectly good move. Bd3. 
and I took another pawn. Maybe not required. I could have just played uh, e6 here instead of taking the pawn and I was better but okay taking the pawn is fine and now Vikramaditya was two pawns down so he said okay let me take I'll just now swindle you know swindle my opponent so I took f4 and I played e6 uh, queen into h5 and now there's a mate threat here so I played f5 which is a fine move he went rook uh, e1 attacking e6 and again a good move here was rook f6 because I want to push his queen back from here and also I can move in with, with my rook so he went knight b5 and I played rook h6 and now it's already very difficult because if he moves his queen somewhere I'm going to give a check and I'm going to take the rook, then take the knight, exchange everything and win the game. So he said, I'll take, take and bishop d4. And let's, let's try to count the material here. Who do you think is better? First of all, I don't need to ask this question, but still, let's try to understand first of all the imbalances in this position and also it's move number 23. So tell me, what would you be thinking in a position like this? What would go through your mind? Have you, what would you do here? Yeah, Aditya Ramanathan says black has better pawn structure, black is a pawn up, black's king is safer, white has the bishop pair, black has the initiative, black's pieces are more active, overall evaluation minus plus. Yes, maybe Aditya did it a few moves ago, now it's definitely winning for black. Play safe says Pradeep Das, okay, that's interesting. Neil Patel says black is better. Sarvanan says, uh, Nandan says black has isolated pawn. Uh, Nandan, remember this pawn here is not an isolated pawn because it has some of its pawns here supporting it like near it. So you can say a backward pawn on e6 definitely. That's a backward pawn. Yes, and this is definitely an isolated pawn somewhere on the side of the board. Good. Ilam Parthi says exchange pieces with bishop g7. Good. This is correct approach and I think this is what good players do when they are ahead in material. They exchange pieces and I think this is the first lesson uh, for today where that when you are how to win one games. I was I had kept this blank because I wanted you guys to contribute. When ahead in material, try to exchange pieces. Okay, so this is something that we will keep adding throughout the class today. Okay, let's get back. So bishop g7 definitely a possibility. But what happens generally in such situations? I'll try try to tell you. Okay, uh, and and. Uh, maybe this doesn't happen to you but it definitely happens to me is that when I'm winning against a good player I start to daydream yeah uh, and this was earlier I would think wow I'm beating this guy this is such a great thing I am the I am beating a player who is so strong and I have never beaten him before and then I would go on to the next thing I'll call my father after the game or my mother after the game and she will be so proud of me. Yeah. And then how do I celebrate tonight? Maybe let's see if it's, it's a tournament victory, then, then even bigger celebrations. Uh, and, uh, you know, mind starts to get distracted by the thoughts of winning and losing more than actually focusing on the game. And if this happens to anyone out there, you must be very careful. You must stop thinking about that thing. And here 
for example it's very important to sit down and to start calculating things like for example i would say if this is a weakness here and he's planning to take it why don't i just play queen d7 i played in the game by the way queen h4 i think the best move here is bishop takes f4 which is a fine move also bishop g7 looks perfectly viable i'm just queen for a rook you know that's uh, a queen for a rook and piece that's a huge material sorry i'm not correct counting it correct he has two pieces for a queen which is not much also i am a pawn up so queen h4 but let's say i play queen d7 and he goes for the move rook to e3 i was a little bit worried in the game for this move rook e3 and now i can just take so i'm just better if he plays the move bishop e5 then he's threatening moves like knight c7 perhaps but i can go bishop g7 bishop d6 and here if you think about it already there are some threats in the position and this is where you must be careful he's threatening knight c7 with the idea of attacking this pawn and this pawn and it's very easy to sort of flip out here to say oh nothing is happening let me play something quickly and what i really want you guys to do is to sit down here and think what will you play here as black what is your move because you have to improve your position you have to do something about it how would you continue Jaydeep Chakrabarti has contributed 800 rupees. Jaydeep, thank you so much. As I have mentioned previously, Jaydeep has been the biggest contributor of this show. Uh, and uh, he says, after the class, please let us know what is your preferred repertoire for black again against one e4 and one d4. Okay. Well, we'll we'll discuss that. So now don't be in a hurry because let's say if you go rook c8, I can at least take a pawn. You know, why to give up a pawn? That is one thing there. Maybe it's okay. I wouldn't say it's bad. A5 is one suggestion. So now if you look at it, a6. Knight c7 is something possibly I don't want to get into. But when you are actually playing such positions, you should not be avoiding complex variation. Yeah, You shouldn't be saying, ah, I don't want to calculate this, I don't want to calculate that. Let's look at it. For example, rook c8, attacking the knight. And now, if he takes on e6, then... I would like to play rook e8, pinning the knight, but he would take bishop f5. And suddenly, you know, he's won two pawns and he has a lot of play in the position. I don't like it. By the way, I must mention rook into e6 is not possible because I take rook into c7. So you see what I'm doing here. Even though this position is kind of winning, I'm just calmly sitting down and calculating. This is one of the important things when you are playing. Tanuja Sahastra Budde, I like your move. I also like moves suggested by pra Prakash Dupes, Mitesh Borkhetaria, Saurabh Poddar, uh, all of them. I think also Jaydeep Chakrabarti, all of you have mentioned Bishop F8. That's, that's not a bad move. But what do you do then? Bishop E5, he goes back, he keeps moving like that uh, maybe now you can go a6 yeah and then you can kind of slowly push him back because now after knight c7 rook c8 this is not hanging so you see what i'm trying to do here is calmly analyze the position okay in the game i played queen h4 but uh, just coming back queen d7 bishop e5 bg7 Bishop d6. I think a good move can be queen f7. 
the point is after knight c7 rook c8 the move knight into e6 rook e8 now bishop f5 is not hanging because i have defended this so you see i'm calculating and now the rooks will get exchanged and that would make it even further easier to win because when you are materially up you must exchange pieces okay so here he i played queen h4 he took on e6 and now i gave a check he came here i gave another check he played king e3 and now black to move what will you play here as black okay aditya thanks for the imbalances uh, very nice now it's time to calculate a bit more here black to move it's actually i can't even believe that i didn't play this move why didn't i play i have no idea yeah advait desai good job advait desai is correct anup datta good good answer kalidosh try to play something better juan rajagopal uh, i think you got the right move but maybe the wrong notation pooja duggar chanchal ja swanand datar shivam choudhary karan parekh you know every one of you is right on the ball excellent i am so happy you are <clears throat> much stronger than i am rook e8 as i have said when ahead in material try to exchange pieces and here the rooks are exchanged i don't know why i did not play it. maybe i thought that he will take this did you guys calculate it you know i thought if i take on f5 then he will take on e8 if i play on take on e6 he will take bishop e6 i didn't want to give up a pawn but what happens after bishop f5 ahmed justin says rook e8 exchanging pieces when we have static advantage that is material advantage yes you are right well i'm sorry for the disconnection but i think i'm back uh it happens once in a while i hope it won't happen again uh <clears throat> well i hope that you can you can check it again i'm back on air okay so hopefully we won't face this issue again so here you play rook e8 and then after bishop f5 you play rook f8 and you see that sometimes playing such moves like rook e8 rook f8 in a winning position <clears throat> is often a little difficult i would say because you are losing your nerves and how to keep your nerves <clears throat> in such a position how to keep your nerves when you are winning is by not thinking about winning but thinking only about your next move about how you can make the best move on the board okay if you can always keep your mind on the position and not think about the party your parents your friends someone coming to the board i think this distracted me a lot when some of my friends would come to the board i was thinking i would look at them and see hmm winning and you know he would see at the board and he would do something it's actually not good you know whenever you are focusing finish off the job at hand and if you become a good finisher if you are in your games uh, you will win many many winning positions okay i'm just going to write down here one more thing which is how to win winning positions when ahead in material exchange pieces number 2 keep your nerves keep your nerves and how do you keep your nerves don't think about other things try to focus only on making the best moves on the board okay 
always try to focus on making the best moves on the board okay these are four advices that i have until now they will grow maybe this page will be not sufficient for for me to cover everything okay for all those who are suffering from lags i think the internet is fine now just refresh your browser and you should be okay okay ashwin subramaniam who says the best advice i heard from rb ramesh was focus on the next move in a game one focus on the next game in the tournament and three never think about result win or loss or draw in or tournament position yes that's perfect that's exactly what i would also like to mention don't try to think about the result victory rating money all of this will come and go but good games good moves is what you should focus on someone has rightly pointed out that always try to focus on things that are in your control so what does that mean if there if you have to choose between say uh, gaining rating and trying to become a more hard working player i would say choose trying to become a more hard working player because that is in your control you can work hard you can improve you can put in the effort but when someone says increase your rating then there are so many things that are not in your control you have to go to play a tournament you have to play an opponent an opponent uh, should should you know what will happen next so it creates a lot of nervousness when things are not in your control so you should try to only focus on things that you can control okay so let's go to the to the end of the game i think i i played uh, a very very stupid move bishop into f4 i don't know why i gave this bishop up as i told you i think i was thinking about king e3 and i'll play f4 and win this rook but when you are winning often you miss certain simple moves like this king e5 and now the position is no longer clear he took on f5 queen e2 king d6 and suddenly white is you know creating major threats i took here rook e7 queen c6 king e5 and i think uh, after a point yes i had still some winning chances but we drew the game uh, and he didn't even win but after a point he realized he is not winning so he actually uh, we drew the game and uh, this was a bad result i think uh, okay so let's have a look at one more game right now we spent a t some time on this but i would like to look at one more game which is relevant to this theme and this one is which one should i choose it's a game which made which i will never forget okay so let's look at that and maybe you all will learn a lot from this so this was my game against uh, sohan fadke okay he's my good friend as i've already mentioned and this was played in 2008 a little bit background of the story so i was uh, this was a tournament in nagpur abdul jabbar tournament uh, i don't know if anyone here did play that tournament um, and it was held in the memory of this great player of india uh, abdul jabbar to raise funds for him and uh, i was in mumbai and i had my ca entrance examination so i didn't want to miss that so i wrote the exam and it was like this that the tournament was beginning so i would miss the first round but i will join from the second round so what i did was i went to the exam i gave the exam my parents actually stood outside the tournament hall uh, sorry not tournament hall the examination hall and once the exam got over i ran out uh, they had my bag and all ready and i ran to thane station i mean i took a train from ghatkopar station went to thane took a train to nagpur and i reached there in the morning 
just in time for the second round okay so well the internet looks looks good yeah okay it was lagging i don't know if you missed my uh, story then the the, the story is that uh, i said that i was giving my ca entrance examination and then i ran and i reached in time for the second round of this tournament and then i won uh, five games in a row so five out of six and this was sorry i won six games in a row so six out of seven and this was the eighth round of the tournament okay this was the eighth round of the event and my opponent played the move e4 <clears throat> i played d6 d4 i like to play the perk defense many times uh, i had studied it and if you know sohan he's a very aggressive player and he played f4 i played bishop g7 castles c5 and he played bishop b5 bd7 takes knight f d7 e5 d5 and here i have a very active move can anyone tell me black to move what do you play yes tejas farhan game with you is also the same theme we will look at it at some point uh, <clears throat> but i haven't prepared that game yet but thanks for reminding me tejas versus farhan some people say uh, that they are also perk players mukilan bala also arun dikshit that's nice okay what should black play here yes kushal jani good move good move this is an excellent move gargi arka not not e5 if you play e5 he will just take d into e6 Reshma Dulgat says knight a6, not a bad move. Reema Singh, good move, well done. Uh, Arun Dikshit, good move. Ilam Parthi as well, good move. Shri Kumar KC, good move. So, well done, guys. B5 is the correct move. The point is that if he takes, I can give a check. He has to go back. I can take, 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 and. Uh, after bishop d2 i can play queen c4 and the queen is very well placed although i have some dark square weaknesses they are not so relevant because of my active queen i can later on also break with f5 and this pawn could become weak so so b5 and then he played castles and after that b4 knight e2 and i went castles okay so sohan as he's a very aggressive player he played the move f5 you know he was more like okay e5 square is weak i don't care i am getting my attack here i will open up my bishop maybe get my queen in like this and so he played f5 now i went knight f6 uh fg i took hg and he played knight to g5 and he you can see the creative attacker the that he is he took uh <clears throat> and he sort of put his knight on g5 in a way that it can never be removed from there so that's a very good idea by him now e4 is defended so i played the move queen c8 now my one of the points could be to go to g4 the other one could be to go to a6 queen a queen e1 queen a6 good move so the queen can't come to h4 just as yet e2 is hanging so knight f4 queen c4 and here i started to feel quite happy with my position because i was attacking c2 i was attacking e4 in some way you know there is pressure there and he played queen h4 so it's a real battle yeah uh, i went knight bd7 i could have taken on c2 but first i played knight bd7 and he played bishop e3 
uh, and I took the pawn on c2. Here he went rook f2 and I played queen c4. So my general concept was I have won a pawn. I have a solid pieces defending my king here. Yes, he has constant threats, but I'm I'm not afraid right now. At least for now, I was trying to be brave. And everything looks very good. So at this point, I was feeling quite confident. Pawn up. Maybe I can slowly start pushing my pawns. And here, uh, he played the move b3. And you know, when he touched his pawn b pawn and he pushed it ahead to b3, I I sort of looked at him and he looked at me and he knew that he can't do anything now because he's touched the pawn because the pawn cannot, cannot do anything and so he played it and I was looking at him you know why was I shocked so black to move what should I do here black to move uh, you have written greetings from St. Petersburg. I was an arbiter in World Rapid and Blitz at St. Petersburg. Wonder what's your name? Because it's written in Russian. I can't read it. So if you can tell us your name. Uh, Chanchal Ja says after Queen C4, Queen H4, Queen E2. Yeah, that's a, that's a point that you make. Queen C4 here. Uh, Sorry, what did you mention? Chanchal ja, queen c4. Sorry, uh, so you mean to say here queen h4 directly. If I take here, then you take here. Yeah, this is a possible, possible thing. Um, because there is a mate there. Yeah, maybe I would have continued with knight d7 here. Not taken on e2. And then perhaps now I'm threatening. So maybe it would have just uh, transposed into the game. So coming back to our story. Uh, sorry, I made the move. But yeah, every one of you got it right. Uh, Ayan, Advait, Arun, Yusuf, Kimaya, Nim, uh, Nirnai, Kaushal, Aditya, Sairam, Ilamparthi. Everyone got it right. And I was shocked, you know. It's like a full piece, Queen C3. And I could see, you know, I have written, I recall that my opponent was, was making his moves in such a way that I felt that he was going to resign the game. He played rook d1, but actually he had placed his rook somewhere on outside the board, you know, like he was not at all interested in playing. I just picked up the bishop, you know, pawn up, piece up, king is okay, should be enough for winning, yeah, like I'm a 20 to 50 player. Isn't that enough? But now I will tell you what I did wrong. Yeah. So my thoughts were like, I'm winning. And I, I think this is natural when you're a piece up. It's natural to think this way. Um, first of all, I started to think that it's so amazing that I missed one round and I'm winning this game. I'll be seven out of eight. I went to the top boards and saw their games and everyone was on six and a half on seven or something like that. And if I thought if they all draw, I can actually go into the lead and missing the first round. What if I win this tournament? Wouldn't it be amazing? Uh, and I could never imagine that in such a position, I should actually be looking at good moves for myself. Okay. And so... How how is the queen going to get trapped? Rook d3? No, 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 no. I'm not, I had seen it. Okay, rook d3. I have queen c1 check. I don't see it getting trapped in any way. I have also queen e1 check. In fact, queen e1 just is winning because... So it was a clean piece up. Yeah, clean piece up. He went king h1. Uh, and now I played... Queen c3 back, rook f3, and queen c2, rook f1. And here I would like you guys to tell me what would you play here as black. Now you will see that although I'm pieced down, 
white has one two three four five pieces in the attack so i have to be a little careful quest says heartbeat starts to be faster when you are winning yes uh so the the point is that here you must stop thinking about anything else and start calculating and how do you calculate okay queen h7 is a threat not yet knight is defending it but hey he may want to sacrifice on g6 fg6 rook f6 rook f knight f6 rook f6 e f6 queen h7 mate ooh bishop f6 queen h7 mate but then you think can i not take with my rook because then if queen h7 i can just play king f8 and you are actually trying to be calm and calculating stuff you should have faith in yourself so here you realize that any move like knight e6 or knight g6 is not going to work because it opens up the f file and at the end the rook takes on f6 and the king can run to f8 so already there is no threat in the position for white he has absolutely no threats and that is why i should have played the move as those who have said here shreyas nana varne um, i think he is the only one who has been tinku saha as well to take the pawn on a2 and here it may seem like pointless to take the pawn but you ask white what are you going to do now tell me is there anything you can do and if you can't do something then i have just picked up a pawn and i am going to play a5 a4 and then start pushing my pawn towards queening yes it may take a few moves but you can't do anything about it i was a little bit prophylactic in nature i played rook f8 which is fine i don't say it's a bad move and he played queen h3 now his ideas are knight e6 if i take take with the queen and then rook h3 so some threats and i played knight e5 here so maybe knight f8 would have been a stronger move trying to control everything maybe this is this would have been the best but knight e5 is what i played by the way a, th a big thanks to atharva polekar who contributed 100 rupees and said a small amount from my prize money i won in a chess tournament thank you so much atharva how old are you and how did you contribute this i mean it's it's really nice that you contributed it from your prize fund okay so rook g3 was played by sohan here and i played the move here now i i started to get a little nervous so it's black to move now what would you play <clears throat> well i i hope guys you can listen to me now i'm very sorry it was a big big lag uh, somehow it was just not getting fixed uh, if you can refresh the page that would be nice uh, very sorry for this interruption <clears throat> so just let me know if you can hear me well i think the internet is fine now at least from my end so if you can hear me just try refreshing your page uh, your browser and let me know okay everyone says it's back it's back it's back i'm sorry for uh, this so coming back to the story that we were here uh when you are winning okay and remember this always okay it's also true in life as well and in everything you do if you are close to your goal you have to be even more alert because things can go wrong at any given point of time and that's the reason why here i am close but i need to have that how do i put it that bravery to actually go and make the move c4 and this is the move which is really really difficult 
because if you if you think about it white can first of all play nf e6 okay and now just ask yourself what is it that white is threatening is he threatening something and the answer could be not really i am thinking to myself what is it that he can threaten mm. is he threatening taking on g7 okay i will take back ah rook f6 e f6 queen h7 king f8 not sure what's going on there i think white is completely fine over there so you see nf e6 and you get panicked but rather than that you have to calmly calculate the consequences and here cb3 say okay what do you want to do he takes back i play rook a c8 now i want to put my rook to c3 and exchange the rooks king g1 the point is he may want to take on f6 some point but there is a mate a back rank mate so he plays king g1 now queen e2 again if you take here i am going this way so the biggest threat that my opponent had in this position after playing any 6 is to actually take on e6 f6 and checkmate me with queen h7 but there is always a back rank mate threat and so i take on b3 he takes back and i keep this threat up now he is threatening to take here but i can play queen e2 and no longer rook f6 because rook c1 is a mate so you see i'm trying to calculate stuff okay now knight into f7 king into f7 and here knight f4 queen d2 there are, there is nothing happening knight g6 queen g4 and finally queen f2 is a nice finishing stroke but also queen h6 wins completely and this position is winning for black so let's go back and see if he can play knight into f7 now when opponent plays knight into f7 what are the different possible moves here that you have black to move what move can you think of in this position okay for all those who for all those uh, play, people for whom it's buffering just try to open a new uh, kind of refresh the window i think it's fine right now there's no real issue from my end as of now So after knight into f7, yeah, you can take with the king here and then comes queen e6, I must go king f8, knight g6, knight into g6, rook into g6. And I have mentioned that in such positions, I feel uncomfortable, white doesn't have any dangerous threats. But his pieces are looming close to the black king and there are chances that any miscalculation would lead to mate. But here I should be making fortifying moves like queen c3 where I don't threaten anything but I stop his threats and which are def difficult to make as then you have to respond to his next threat but sometimes passive defense is better. Well in general i wrote this back in the time maybe 12 years ago can you can you tell me <clears throat> i saw this line and yet i didn't go for it what does it show to you as a as a chess player what does it show what is the quality that i lack can anyone tell me yes rook into f6 is a threat but i can play queen c3 or queen b2 so what is the <clears throat> quality that I lack in myself? Mental fear says Sumed Ramteke. Okay. Varun Raste says faith. Yeah. 
ओके हैप्पीनेस ऑफ विनिंग द गेम ओके किमाया विरले कॉन्फिडेंस जयंत राव कैलक्युलेशन टेक विद ओवर कॉन्फिडेंस आई थिंक ओवर कॉन्फिडेंस वॉज नेवर माय प्रॉब्लम विरिंची वडाली कॉन्फिडेंस वरुण रास्ते फेथ इन योर कैलक्युलेशन कालीडोस से शो ऑफ वॉट शो ऑफ कम ऑन आई एम ट्राइंग टू शो यू वन ऑफ माई वर्स्ट गेम्स एंड एंड हाउ कैन दैट बी शो ऑफ अर्जुन पी आर कैलक्युलेशन आदित्य आनंद गट लैक ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इन कैलक्युलेटिंग इन कंटिन्यूंग लॉन्ग गेम्स नो लेस ऑप्टिमिस्टिक टू मच रिस्पेक्ट फॉर ओपोनेंट आई थिंक दो हैव mentioned confidence or you can say self confidence have hit the nail on the head you know self confidence is something that i lacked in myself and it didn't happen in every position yeah it happened in such positions where i was not good at you know i couldn't calculate for example i would think to myself what if he goes queen g4 what if he attacks my bishop now my knight cannot move now this is hanging what will i play you know all such thoughts like this would start coming in my head and yeah this is a possibility but then you know there there could be a very concrete way for white to come out of this mess for black to come out of this mess for example i can think here for example what can i play mm. is bishop h8 possible not really um how can i fight in this position so i'll move my queen to say e5 then rook g7 yeah so what if i play queen c1 or queen a1 or queen b1 i can play this and the thing is if you take here you are checkmate and if you take here i can take back your queen and the pieces are exchanged so you see it's all about actually little things that you have to keep in mind these are the accurate variations and i was not confident of finding them on the board and when you lack such confidence how do you gain that for example how can you make yourself confident in such situations can anyone tell me yeah i think uh, there's some issues with the internet today i'm very sorry for that but i think uh, now you it uh should be okay in this position what is the move that you think uh what is the way in which i can sort of improve my self confidence how can i become much better so the way i would do it is i will practice the art of calculation game like sessions at home so so basically there are two issues that we are dealing with here one is the ability to the psychological thing and the other one is the ability to actually find those good moves on the board okay so psychology you can improve by all the methods like deep breathing by trying to have confidence on yourself by you know working on those things like yoga meditation and all of it but the faith the less faith i have on my ability can only be worked upon by making sure that you work hard and improve your confidence and how do you do that is at home you build a game like situation you kind of go inside a room put a chess board no noise no one to disturb take a position put a clock and then start solving those things if you are able to do that in a way where you you
okay so uh, I, I well this is the last one or queen c1 here okay so in the game I went knight h5 which was a bad move because after takes I thought queen e2 would you know take this guy here and also threaten to take the knight on h5 but as it turned out that he could play rook f3 and after take he could take with the pawn and here I took gh there were other ways to win like queen e3 but it was already too difficult for me I uh, now I'm a rook up but he has threats down the g file also queen into h5 so queen b2 queen into h5 e6 queen into f7 king h8 and he played rook g4 threatening a mate and i was just lost here just lost queen c1 king g2 queen e1 queen h5 check check and here when he played d into e6 uh, i gave a few checks and when he had when i ran out of checks here uh, there is a forced mate on d7 or f7 i took my king and i castled long in this position and when i castled long uh, sohan was stunned and he was like what and he called the arbiter and i told him no i'm just joking you know um, I just made this move and I resigned the game. Uh, so you can see that from such a winning position, I lost this game. Of course, I made this joke at the end, but for the next, what was it, five to six hours, I just couldn't stop crying. I, I mean, at that point, I was 18 years old, but I was just crying and sad and depressed and, you know, so many things. Uh, it was not a pleasant experience, but I can tell you a few things that I learned from it, which I would like to note down here so that it can be useful for you. The first thing, uh, the these are the four things that we mentioned. Number five, try to bring game like scenarios in your training sessions okay so this bring the tension in your practice by placing a clock and also imagining that an opponent is sitting opposite you okay this is very important and the seventh point which i want to say is improve your recovery time okay this is very important so now we have more more points so the last point is not as such to win a winning game but it is more about that when you lose you shouldn't be crying all the time you shouldn't be throwing off stuff you shouldn't do these things uh, no one was there to tell me actually that this is wrong. In fact, it was it was a like Amruta who actually helped me to come out of this. She would you know be with me. She would talk to me after I lost, and I would be rude to her. I would not talk well to her. The important thing is that when you lose a game, others have not done anything wrong. You know you shouldn't be behaving badly with them. For example, I know of people who actually throw things away, who actually break things and all of this when they are losing and when they have lost a winning game. And this is not the right way. The, uh, the right approach is to learn from your losses and to improve. From this loss, I learned so much. Actually, I became a better player. And this is what I want you guys to do as well. If you feel, if you are you're losing and you feel bad it's natural but reduce your recovery time try to recover faster in the sense that try to say to yourself that yes i lost what did i do wrong let me understand that let me try not doing that again and apply it in your next game and then try to improve and take it from there so this is the way in which you can 
actually improve as a chess player uh, and this is very useful for me even right now in my life as an entrepreneur and in other spheres because every time I hit a roadblock, I just think what is it that I can improve? What is the best move in the given position? And then I try to find it and apply it. And this I learned from chess. And if you can't learn it and if you constantly are sad and keep on crying, this is not going to make you a better player. Now, last thing which I want to mention today is that uh, many times when you lose a game, you are constantly telling your friends and people whom you know, I lost, I lost, you know, it's really bad, I lost. And you want to just share with them. The, I don't know why, but chess players are the people who want to actually share always their losses and tell others how they lost. But I think... That the more you keep on telling other people, the more it revolves in your head. You don't need to tell others. No one is interested. In fact, when I go and tell someone I lost a winning game, they're like, okay, good. How do I care? Some people even go to the extent of taking them to a board, showing them the game and telling them I should have played this. It is only by showing someone that they can overcome their grief. I think you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't keep on constantly trying to... Well, you should be good enough to say to yourself, okay, I made a mistake. And the people who actually care for you, your trainer, try to share it with them. Try to show their game, try to learn from them. If you don't have a trainer, then do it with someone who is actually interested and you shouldn't just do it to show. Like for example, I can just tell anyone here that, hey, instead of playing um, in this position, Knight h5, I should have played c4, it's winning. Why didn't I do this? But it's not so simple. I was not afraid of just c4 move. I was actually afraid that it is a much deeper issue that I have, which is I don't have faith in my calculations, that I couldn't actually bring myself to, to go in there and play this position. And these things are more important to be fixed rather than individual little things. Ah, okay, if I played C4 here, but that won't help you in your next game. So try to fix the root of your problem. If you feel nervous while you are winning, try to calm yourself down. Practice such positions at home. The way you do it is through taking any games from any books, from mega database, from chess base. Try to study them and try to get better. Okay? Don't keep on all the time saying, I lost winning games, this was winning, this was... I think chess players have this habit, which is quite frankly, I find it irritating. I, I was myself like that, but now I understand that it never ever helped me uh, in any way. Mikhail Botvinnik said, I have a time pressure issue all the time. I want to calculate the opening so much. Can you do a session on how to get rid of it? Because all the time I have good position but losing. Uh, I can give you only one uh, advice. And this I have done with Amruta on several times. She also has big time pressure issues. And uh, the only thing that I can tell you is time pressure is an illness. Okay. And what do you do with illness? You get rid of it. You don't try to say, oh, I have fever. It seems like this is some good kind of fever. Let me try to reduce it. Let me try to do. No, you take a medicine and you get it out. The same way you remove time pressure. You want to lose games by playing fast. You lose them. But make sure that you get it out of from your life. Because really speaking, it can ruin chess careers. And the biggest example of it is Alexander Grishchuk at the highest level. Who who is an amazing player, but I feel he can never become a world champion only because of his time pressure issue. If he fixes that, he has everything. But whenever he has a good position, he comes under time pressure and then has to play fast. That's His problem is at a different level. But we all face problems at our own levels. And that's the reason why I would say uh, Botwinik, instead of trying to find a solution of how to play well under time pressure, just get rid of time pressure.
just try to make sure you don't come under it and it will require a lot of self discipline it will require you to lose many games on on the position but once you get rid of time pressure you will become much better yeah okay i think today's class was a uh, quite a tough one in my opinion i tried to show you things which maybe otherwise is not so easy to to face your inner uh, problems to go deeper into them to try to understand where was it that you where is where is it that you are lacking uh, and it is never a simple thing okay it's sometimes very deep for example all those who have seen batman begins uh, my one of my favorite movies or batman series uh, in that you realize that bruce wayne tried to do lot of things to get to get uh, himself stronger but he realized until he doesn't get rid of his core fear which was the fear of bats he could never become a brave person so i want you to face those fears try to openly find them i'm sure you can do it and then fix them uh, your homework for today is try to look at one game from your life where you cried or made you really sad and try to share that with me um, it's a tough homework i know it means opening up yourself but i think i had the i had the comfort with all of you all the people who came here and you know you have been here with me to actually share with you such a game you know where i'm a piece up pawn up it might look funny the way i'm showing you right now it was really a big tragedy for me at that point okay uh someone had mentioned before that how can you look how can i get to vishi anand arena well uh, i can just show you here if you go to play chess download this play chess software the way you download it is from chessbase.com or from chessbase india shop here if you go to support download uh, you will find the chessbase uh, play chess here get it for yourself install it for free and then sign in and when you go to playchess.com it opens up and here inside here you will see the main playing hall there is below it chess base india room and inside chess base india room is the vishi anand arena okay i hope that was clear if it was not just replay it again uh, later on okay uh anything else brilliant z cheng says i have a question does mastering notation help me to memorize the position and improve calculation i have said it many times and i'll say it again mastering calculation is very important uh, notation if you are good at notation you can improve your calculation it's like saying do i need to learn a b c d to be, to speak english well perhaps not but if you do learn it you will be better you your foundation will be stronger okay by the way i must say today's show we had a lot of uh, lag we lagged at least three times uh, i had a bad internet connection i'm sorry for that and i hope that you guys had a decent time uh, learning a, a big happy birthday to shriyana malya who decided to spend her 10th birthday with all of us uh thanks a lot for for doing that and thanks for all those who contributed to today's session if you haven't done you can find a link of pay you money in your description to the video you can contribute that over there all the money will go to pm cares link uh i think there was one thing which i should do before leaving which was a suggestion by um jaydeep who said can you tell us your repertoire with black so i can just quickly say against e4 i used to i still play karokan is my main repertoire i like to play it with black but i have realized it 
that e4 e5 is really a very solid and good way to play with black uh, earlier i used to find it dull and boring but now no longer i i enjoy the little intricacies that even go into such symmetrical sort of systems uh, so i have two weapons you can say although i do like playing perk from time to time sicilian if i play then i like going for the accelerated dragon often which is kind of my first love when i was young and also e6 is what i have dabbled into the taimano variation okay and uh, apart from that against d4 i really play the e6 and nimzo indian this is one of my main weapons to knight f3 i used to play the bogo indian but now i play d5 which is quite a solid way to continue um you can see that here there are many options i also like to play c5 d5 b5 which is the benko and also sometimes maybe d4 i play d6 so that c4 i can go e5 if you go e4 i can play anyway knight f6 and get to my perk i also like to play the philidor by the way e4 d6 d4 nf6 nc3 e5 this is also one of the things that i like so you can say my my uh, repertoire is kind of has positional solid openings but some which are a little bit aggressive or shaky things when i have to play for a win okay uh okay rishila says that you never see my comment well rishila not not true yeah i see your comment uh, atharva yes you are 10 years old very good uh, telugu chess also by the way uh, quest was asking where can we get such positions uh, to actually hone your calculations i would say just from any book or any mega database take any games of top players and start calculating you know uh, the best way to do it right now could be through some book maybe dorotsky's books that you can find on chess base india these are good books also yakob agard books on calculations are good ones okay so i think for today that's enough uh, we'll come back tomorrow we'll talk a bit about material imbalance we'll also speak about how to um get better at you know calculating how we can do things better uh, and maybe i'll be able to get some top players to join in in the future streams but first i am a little bit worried about my internet i hope i can fix that uh, and see you all tomorrow thank you for um being here and being patient and once again sorry for today's lag and uh, internet disconnections